On April 15, 1912, at 2.20 a.m., what was deemed one of the most luxurious and safe ships ever built hit an iceberg and sank off the coast of Newfoundland, taking more than 1,500 lives. This is one of the most well-documented tragedies in history, with quite a number of books and films made about it. Here are 10 facts about the Titanic. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Number 10 the largest moving object ever built during its time. When the Titanic entered service in 1912, it was the largest ship afloat. At 882 feet 9 inches long and 141 feet high, she must have seemed like a floating city to the occupants. In fact, the Titanic is the largest moving object ever built by man at that time. The New York Post even ran a story on November 27, 1910, asking whether the New York port would be able to dock this massive monster. Today's luxury cruise ships already dwarf the Titanic size-wise, but that's to be expected because of how far engineering has come since then. But during its time, engineers had to develop methods specifically to build a ship that huge. Aside from its massive proportions, the Titanic is also famous for its unmistakable profile, primarily the four massive exhaust stacks right on top of the ship. All of us assume that all four would serve a function, but that's far from the truth. In fact, only three of them serve a purpose. One was added purely for aesthetic purposes. Because of her grandeur, it was felt that the Titanic should have four exhaust stacks. Thomas Andrews' efficient original design, however, necessitated only three. The ship, therefore, had one that was purely just decorative stack. Number 9. One of three. Because of her size and the new equipment required to build her, it would have been too expensive to build the Titanic alone. Instead, she was built alongside two sister ships, both of which also had eventful lifetimes. Construction of the RMS Olympic began first, and the ship was launched on the 20th of September 1910. For the next 12 months, the fractionally smaller Olympic was the largest liner in the world, until her bigger, more beautiful sister was built. It can be said that the Olympic was the dry run for the Titanic. Less of the attention to detail applied to the aesthetic of the Titanic was used on the Olympic. After the former sank, however, improvements included lifeboats for all, and in October 1912, the installation of a watertight inner skin. The Olympic rescued soldiers from the sinking British battleship Audacious in October of 1914 and served as a troop ship carrying Canadian soldiers to the European front. She was the only one of the three to survive more than half a decade. The third and biggest ship, the Britannic, went into production after the Titanic disaster and sank in 1916 after hitting a mine. She had been a British hospital ship, sadly. Number 8. Tragedy from the get-go. The sinking of the Titanic is definitely one of the most tragic maritime disasters in history. However, tragedy seemed to plague her even before her maiden voyage. During the 26-month construction of the Titanic at the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, 28 serious accidents and 218 minor accidents were recorded. At the time when work on her finished, eight workers had already lost their lives. This was a smaller number than expected for the time, which was one death for every $100,000 spent, as the Titanic cost $1.5 million to build. 15 deaths could have been anticipated. This just goes to show how safe working conditions weren't actually a priority back then. The Titanic was claiming lives up to the day of its launch. A 43-year-old shipwright, James Dobbin, was actually killed on the day of the Titanic's launch. 1210 on the 31st of May 1911, an estimated 10,000 people watched as the massive ship slid from the yard onto the River Lagan. Dobbin was crushed during the process of removing the timber stays which had been holding the ship upright. Number 7. The richest man in the world sank with her. John Jacob Astor IV was not just the richest man on the Titanic, but widely believed to be the richest man in the world at the time of his death. He was worth an estimated 150 million or 3.5 billion in today's dollars. Astor was on the ship returning home from a months-long honeymoon with his new wife, Madeline Tomage Force, who at 18 years of age was 28 years younger than him. The extended honeymoon was actually a way to escape society's gossip. Astor had just been divorced within two years of his new marriage, which was relatively unheard of back then. Astor's body was one of the few that was recovered in the Atlantic Ocean after the ship went down. Among other possessions, he was found with $2,440 in his pocket, which is roughly around $60,000 today. Number 6. From Survivors to Movie Stars American silent film actress Dorothy Gibson was one of the approximately 700 survivors of the collision. 
Upon arriving in New York City unscathed, she immediately began filming Saving the Titanic, the first of many films to depict the events of the sinking. It was released in May of 1912, just a month after the crash. She is famous for wearing the same clothes and shoes in the movie as she had worn during the actual sinking. While the film was successful, it exists only in memories now as the only known print of the film was destroyed in a fire. Another survivor, Lawrence Beasley, tried to crash the filming of the 1958 film A Night to Remember because he wanted to symbolically go down with the ship. According to IMDb, Beasley was on the set of A Night to Remember, which is considered the most accurate of all Titanic films. He allegedly tried to jump into the scene depicting the ship sinking in order to symbolically go down with the ship. Legend has it that director Roy Ward Baker refused as it would have been a union violation and could have halted filming. Beasley was a survivor from the second class and wrote a memoir about his experience entitled The Loss of the SS Titanic. Number 5. Class Division The Titanic has forever been known to be the most luxurious cruise ship of the time, and with good reason. The interior of the Titanic was modeled after the Ritz Hotel, with first-class cabins finished in the Empire style. Aiming to convey the aura of a floating hotel, it was intended for passengers to forget they were on board a ship and feel as though they were in the hull of a great house on shore. The booziest of the booze, if you know what I'm saying. Well, unless you were riding third class, because then the same couldn't be said. Don't get me wrong, by all accounts, the third class section of the Titanic was miles ahead when it comes to comfort when compared to those of an average ship, but it was still pretty rough. The total number of third-class passengers ranged from 700 to 1,000, and they all had to share two bathtubs. Number 4. Dress and Drag or Die It has long been rumored that a few men dressed up as women to get a spot on a lifeboat. With the whole women and children first mentality, it seems that a few enterprising men took full advantage of it. Heck, one cross-dressing rumor even ended up in a divorce. Dickinson and Helen Bishop were granted a divorce in 1916, four years after the Titanic went down. Helen claimed that her husband was cruel and a drunk, but the relationship was also plagued by rumors that Dickinson had dressed up as a woman in order to escape the ship. In his official testimony during the U.S. Senate inquiry reading on the Titanic, he claimed that there had been no official order allowing only women and children to get on lifeboats. Bishop's not the only man to have been accused of disguising himself as a woman. J. Bruce Ismay, William Carter, and William T. Saloper were all dogged by the same rumors throughout their lives. Number 3. Surviving the Two Sisters Depending on how you look at it, stewardess and nurse Violet Jessup is the luckiest, or unluckiest woman alive. She survived the sinking above the Titanic and its sister ship, the Britannic. Jessup was just 25 when she survived the sinking of the Titanic, where she worked as one of the ship's nurses. Her superiors instructed her to get into a lifeboat while the ship was going down to show women that the boats were safe. She survived the sinking without even a scratch on her. After surviving such a tragedy, lesser men would probably have developed a phobia of ships, but not Jessup. Undeterred by this maritime tragedy, Jessup began working on the Britannica, also dubbed the Titanic too by the media. You know, in hindsight, probably not the best nickname. While fulfilling her duties as a hospital ship, the Britannic came across a mine that had been planted by a German U-boat in 1916. That ship also happened to sink and Jessup escaped again, but this time she wasn't quite as lucky. She ended up suffering a serious head injury that would affect her whole life. Now it's time for today's best pick. Today's best pick is a fact about the Titanic that took decades before being generally known. What is this fact? Well, let's find out next with number two. Split in half. People have known the exact location where the Titanic sank since, well, the day it sank. But did you know that it took seven decades before the actual wreck was found? The Titanic wreck lies 3,700 meters below the surface of the Atlantic. It wasn't discovered until 1985, at which time it was confirmed that the boat had split in two. The task of finding the Titanic was very daunting, which included a military operation to survey the remains of some nuclear submarines led by Robert Ballard. The two halves of the doomed ship were found a third of a mile apart, its contents spilled out of an area of 15 square miles. Many areas of the ship remain unexplored, as they're inaccessible to underwater vehicles. While the ship itself is too fragile to be brought to the surface, innumerable smaller parts and objects have been salvaged many including a section of the hull set in the Luxor Hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. 
Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Number 1. Binoculars could have prevented the disaster. We all know that the reason why the Titanic sank was because it hit a huge iceberg. But what you probably didn't know is that the ship's lookouts had to rely on their eyesight alone because the ship's only pair of binoculars were locked inside a cabinet that no one could find the key to. The ship's lookouts, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, didn't have access to binoculars during the journey and therefore couldn't see very far. The ship's second officer was replaced at the last minute and forgot to hand out the key to the locker that housed the ship's binoculars. According to the official 1912 inquiry findings, only 37 seconds elapsed before actually seeing the iceberg, calling downstairs and deciding what course of action to take. Fleet was the lookout who called out the now famous words, Iceberg right ahead. He survived the sinking, but tragically went on to die by suicide in 1965 after the death of his wife. On the centennial anniversary of the Titanic sinking, a prankster removed a memorial wreath from his gravestone and replaced it with a pair of binoculars and a note apologizing for the lateness of the binoculars. What happened to the key, though? Well, the key did resurface at auction in 2010, where it was sold for over $130,000. Know of any other obscure Titanic facts? Let us know down below in the comments. Also, feel free to check out the channel's other amazing videos. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.